Today, we'll be tying the craft for a clouser. Hey everyone, Matt here with The Northern Angler. If you don't know us yet, we're a small, independent fly shop located in Traverse City, Michigan. The original clouser has been around since the 80s and is a staple in both saltwater and freshwater fly boxes of guides across the country. It's a simple fly and it works great. The version we're tying today uses the synthetic craft fur and is a great alternative, especially when you're fishing a little bit slower water and you want a little bit more movement out of your fly than the original, which uses bucktail. Let's go ahead and take a look at the materials we'll be using today. The hook we're using today is a Gamagatsu B10S. You can always downsize, but I really like a size two for this fly. I really don't think it's too big. Your eyes are double pupil eyes in size large. These are durable, they look great, and they really help provide a jigging motion to this fly, which I really think sells it to the fish. The majority of the body here is craft fur. We're doing a perch scheme today, so yellow, bright orange, and olive will all be used. To add a little accent, a little flash, we're using crystal flash down the sides and using it also to cover up some thread wraps on the shank. Your accent feathers here are from a whiting bugger pack. You can also substitute some barred saddle feathers from MFC as well. To add a little bit more flash, we're doing an underwing and a top wing with some ripple ice fiber. As always, don't forget the entire material list is available down below. Go ahead and place your hook securely in the vise. We're going to start the thread right at the eye here. I'm not going to build up a whole lot, but starting at the eye works out here because we need to tie in our eyes. Trim off that excess. I'm wrapping a little bit back. And I need to leave at least an eyes length of space here to finish the head up so make sure you're not putting your eyes too far forward Let's start these usually I do six or eight wraps one direction and then six or eight wraps the other direction I kind of call those X wraps and I usually push back on these make sure they always like to sneak forward. Put one or two in front, one or two behind. At this point, I'll add just a dab of glue. On under and on top. You don't need to do this, but it does help. Then I'll do four more each side. Or a few wraps in front. Just make sure they're nice and secure. They don't have to be, you don't want to build up too much thread there, but that's nice and secure. Next, we're going to build a thread base. Because we're using craft fur, the synthetic is pretty slick, so it's really helpful to have a nice solid thread base. Then your material won't spin as much. I'm going to go a little bit farther back than the point, back to the barb there, and then I'm going to wrap back to the point of the hook, to where my thread intersects the point. And that'll be our tie-in point for the tail. We're using bright orange craft fur here. Trim a little bit. You do not need a whole lot. And you want to pull out some of this under fluff too. You don't need that stuff. To measure this, I typically am trying to align the butts with the eye just to get a good length measurement on this. Some's going to get stuck in the glue, that's okay. Now you can trim this here if you want and get rid of it, but I'm not worried about it. So we're just going to do a pinch wrap here, three wraps, then go fold this up and go right to the shank. And this is really going to help with securing this, keeping it from spinning and being able to pull out. So I'm going to go back on top of this 
and this will get messy. That's okay. I'm not worried about it being perfect. We're going to cover all this stuff up anyways. I'm going to trim that off and cover that up with some thread wraps. Great. Looks good. We're keeping that on top of the shank here. We put these eyes on the top because this is designed to ride inverted, especially good when you have a rocky bottom or where there's lots of wood. This will hopefully keep your fly lasting a little bit longer without getting snagged. We're going to add some accent feathers. This is from a whiting bugger pack here, but the MFC barred saddle feathers are a great substitute if you can't find one of these. I'm going to strip these feathers just to match about the length of that orange craft fur. I'm going to strip away just so I can get at that stem real easy. You can trim this off if you want. Pinch it there with my thumb. Put about three wraps, make sure it's aligned. Work it up the shank. Trim your excess and work back. Same thing on that opposite side. Measure that feather out. Strip the fibers back. That tells me what my tie-in point is. I just use my thumb to pinch it there against the shank. You can do those three wraps and then you can readjust as you need. Working up the shank. Trim that excess again. And you can start to see everything's coming together, which is great. All right, we need to do the body next. We're going to use gold crystal flash. You can use sparkle braid here. I just, we're using crystal flash later and I just wanted to show you, you can use it for the body as well. So I'm taking about four or five strands here. I'm going to fold them over. I got one that's shorter than the rest. I'll pull that out of there. And just secure that down work my thread up towards the eyes you can twist them up hold them together i'm just covering up all my thread wraps here this is what happens when some of your fibers are shorter than the others that's okay just a little gold flash underneath everything tie those off trim them Clean that up. Next, we're going to add another layer of that orange craft fur. This one is this is probably a little bit thick, so I'm going to pull some of that under fiber away. I'm going to lay this down on top. Try not to hook yourself; it happens. And I'm going to do that same measurement. I'm trying to line up the butts with the tails there, or with the eye. Two, three wraps there. And to make sure this is really secure, I like to pull back just a little bit. Put a thread wrap, pull back a little bit. It's the same technique I'd use if I was tying with bucktail today. If you want to make a seriously durable fly, Add some glue every time you tie off your, your craft fur. Great. Next we're going to add a little bit of flash. So back to that crystal hackle, crystal flash, excuse me. Pull out two strands. I'm going to do one strand on each side. I'm going to fold it across. Bring it up to the shank, tie her in. I'm going to trim that just beyond the length of those feathers. Same thing on the opposite side. Check, make sure that looks good, that's aligned. Just beyond the length of those feathers. 
after we have that secure, we're going to add a flash layer as a wing. And we're going to use some of this electric ripple ice fiber. This is a great alternative to something like ice wing, which always, always gets tangled. Plus this stuff just glows in fluorescent light. So really good if you have some sunny conditions, it will stand out. I'm going to do two wraps or so. Might go in front of the eyes here and work this back. Fold in that just like so. And at any time you want to comb this out, do so. Grab that, grab that comb. Actually, I comb them out at the end. But take a look at how bright that fluorescent fiber glows underneath. That'll be a great underbody. Next, we need to add the underbody. We're going to be using just standard yellow craft fur here. And I want the tips here to align with the back of the fly. Back of the feathers. Make sure those flash bits still extend a little bit. Okay, I got that set. I'm pinching this between my index and thumb against the shank. I'm going to use a very loose wrap here because I want this to stay on top of the shank. If you use too much thread tension, it's going to spin. Okay, so very loose. I do two or three of those. And then I can actually grab the butts and make sure I pull up and that's going to keep them on top of the shank. And I haven't let go yet with my left hand. From there, I like to lift I use a little bit of thread tension here. I'm going to lift the butts up. Now when I go to the shank, one, two, three, four, that's really going to lock things in. If you can, if you take away anything, it's go on, go to the material and then back to the shank. Okay. Now I'm going to bring my thread on the backside around the eyes. And again, on top of that yellow to secure it down. I just did two wraps there. I'm going to come back to in front of the eyes. I'm going to do that same tie-off method I used in the front here, where I bring a few of the butts up, do a wrap, a few of the butts up, do a wrap, a few of the butts up, do a wrap. And this is really going to help secure things down. Carefully with my scissors, I'm going to reach in. Trim that off. And it's very likely that you're going to have some material covering up the eye. We're going to clean this up. I'm going to show you a trick at the end too if you have kind of a clogged eye with this stuff. I'd rather you have a clogged eye than cut your thread here because it's pretty easy to clean up. Okay, put some wraps working from the eye back here and see how that that helps that out a lot. Great. At this point you can rotate your hook up. Take a look here, clean anything out that you need to, take your time. I usually brace, you can see I brace my scissors against my thumb, which is a, and my hand is laying on top of my vise. This gives you a lot of stability. Great. All right, we need to add our top wing color. We're going to use medium olive here. Again, try not to spear yourself if you will on that hook point especially when you have things inverted and i'm going to try and line this stuff up just about the same as everything else if it's a little bit shorter that's okay i'm going to bring my thread back to right against the eyes you don't want to tie in right up against the eye it will just uh it'll make things more difficult for you for sure so same process, two, three loose wraps, except I'm not going to go back behind the eyes here. I'm going to go lift and to the shank, three wraps, and you can go behind the eye, but still on top of this material. I just don't want to do any full wraps behind it. All right, I'm going to lift the butts. 
Separate those out. If you need to, you can grab a bodkin. I usually do about three of those. And right about now, you need to be conserving your thread wraps because it's probably about to build out of control. And that's okay. That's normal. Don't stress out. And I'm just trimming away, just giving this thing a haircut. I'm going to cover up those butts with thread wraps here, but not too many because I have one step left that I really want to do. I've been doing this for, for a while now and I really like the look of a little bit of flash on top. You could also add, if you want to go natural, you could go with some peacock curl here. It's a classic look. I'm going to go right back with that ripple ice fiber, but an olive this time. It's going to match that overwing. I don't need too much here. I'm just going to fold this on top. Right up against the eyes here. Now you can go forward to the eye. That's just going to give you more purchase with this stuff. That way it just doesn't go crazy. Fold that back, Get one out of the way here. Just cover up any loose pieces here and I'm ready to tie this thing off. I like to add just a dab of glue. You can use some UV if you want. I like to add something like this Z-Mint and then whip finish on top of it. I'm going to use a lot of back angles with my thread here. You can see how I'm bringing it towards the back of the fly. Anything neutral or forward, that thread is going to fly down that angle and you're going to have you're going to have a mess. 3 4 I do two whip finishes here. One to get things started so you can exhale at this point and then a second one just to cover things up and really Make sure everything is secure. Tighten that down real good. Bring in your scissors, trim your excess, and that is your fly. Use a brush here, try and brush this thing out. Just a little bit, clean things up. Let that glue dry before we do this little trick I was teasing you about at the beginning. All right, say you have a little bit, a little bit of craft fur stuck in there. That's okay, that happens. You're gonna want your bodkin and a lighter. We're gonna heat this bodkin up candle works too maybe you have some lavender scented or you know i don't know whatever candle you're into you can heat your bodkin up here and we're just gonna simply insert this and that's gonna clean out that eye both sides trying to burn yourself and now you have a nice clean finished eye and a fly that's ready to fish all right that's it for us today thanks for watching everyone we'd love to hear what you have to think about this tutorial and if you've tied and maybe fished this fly we'd love to hear what your experience is with it if any of this info was helpful think about hitting that thumbs up button it's a big help for us if you'd like to support this channel next time you need materials or anything fly fishing maybe check out the northernangler.com at the very least, try and support your local fly shop. I know they'll appreciate it. See you soon, everyone, in the shop or out on the water.